We've got 10 different fragrances here and two honorable mentions for black bottles. These are gonna look sick on your, you know, countertop or you know, wherever you keep your fragrances. Hopefully it's in a cooler environment, maybe at your, you know, parents' house or your girlfriend's house. Why don't you love me anymore? At least leave your black bottles at your primary residence. At least do that. I was tagged by Trevor. I'm gonna go ahead and tag Paul over at 50 Cents, uh, Nate over at Paragon Fragrance, and Sam Broom. Go check him out. I'll have his link in the description down below. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna make some tags. Chad Secrets, Post Cologne, TLTG Reviews, you're up. Um, do some awesomeness. And if you've already done the video, disregard, I guess. It was difficult to narrow it down to 10. I mean, I have maybe like six or seven more black bottles that are really good looking, but I just kind of narrowed it down to 10 and I have two honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is Odyssey by Armoff. And this is a take or an inspiration like a Dior Homme intense kind of DNA mixed with Noir Extreme by Tom Ford kind of merges those two together and like creates a baby of beautifulness. Uh, it's it's a little synthetic on the top, um, but it does dry down and it becomes a very sexy, um, you know, vanilla Tom Ford kind of clone. My girlfriend actually thinks that it smells like a, like a vapor, uh, like a synthetic vape. Um, so just be warned of that. If you don't like that stuff, maybe veer away from it. But Odyssey by Ermoff, honorable mention, you know, there we go. And then another honorable mention, I know Trevor mentioned it in his video, so that's why I put it on a uh, honorable mention. I have a few others that he has in here, but I'm just gonna put this one as an honorable mention. Aqua Di Gio Profumo. I think everybody knows this, so I'm not gonna go too in depth about this one. Like this is the staple of a black bottle, a black, you know, the black, you know, whole thing going on. This is the staple, this right here, this this created black bottles. So those are the two honorable mentions and those are great. Like honestly, those could be in the list too. Okay, first one on the list is a Prada and that's Prada Amber, what? Not Amber, Prada Luna Rosa Black. This is a sexy beast. Primarily, this is a dating fragrance or like a mysterious, uh, sophisticated, well put together man. It smells a little bit like Play-Doh. So if you've never smelt it before, you're gonna get hit by a a wave. Yes, I'm talking about like the stuff kids play with. I mean, adults could play with it too, but that's a little weird. Initially, you're gonna get hit by that Play-Doh and then you're gonna be like, why did Nate recommend this to me? But what happens is it becomes so beautiful in the dry down, in the mid, it, it, it just becomes a smooth, creamy, sexy, beautiful scent. Is that a good way to describe fragrances? I don't know, Nate, I don't know. Ambery, um, and then there's some tonka bean in here, which really makes it a modern classic kind of fragrance. I think every men's fragrance nowadays has tonka bean or, you know, something like that going on in there. But anyway, Prada Luna Rosa Black is a sexy black bottle. This is gonna look dope on your shelf and it's an elegant, smooth, sexy scent. I wear this in the fall, in the winter, in the springtime as a, just an everyday scent. And that's exactly what this thing can do. You can wear it to a date, yeah, whatever, but you can also wear it as an everyday just driver. It has to be a little bit cooler, you know, to wear it, to make it really shine. You can wear it whenever you'd like. Next one on the list, and I am super excited. If I had the elixir in my possession, I would have added that into this list, but currently I don't have it uh, at the time of recording this video. So I'm just gonna go with the original. This is Invictus Victory, uh, not elixir, just Invictus Victory. Yeah. Okay, once again, this is a smooth, sexy vanilla. It's got a like a creaminess to it, but the tonka bean is also in here. It's so pleasant. It's so elegant. It's like a cloud of smooth vanilla sexiness. It pushes off the skin pretty well too, and it does last for quite some time too. So it is a great performer. I'm really excited to get the elixir in. Uh, it, it's coming on international shipping, so it does take a little bit extra time. So anyway, uh, regardless, there's a little bit of a citrus tone at the top that comes from a lemon note within here. And then there's some pink pepper at the top as well. The mid has some like lavender going on, but it really dries down to a, like a sweet, ambery vanilla kind of fragrance. It's very aromatic. I'm really interested to see what the elixir does because this is really good. The next one on the list is a bit of a spicy, powdery kind of fragrance. It gets compared to Dior Homme Intense a lot, but that is Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum. It is a little bit of powdery action going on in here. So if you do not like powdery nature, 
veer away from this one. It has some spicy aspects in the top, but it is a very well-rounded amber vanilla kind of fragrance, and it does cater towards that like Dior Homme Intense kind of DNA, and it is really something divine. It's like a modern gentleman. This one actually kind of needs like the fall or the winter time to really kind of perform really good. You know, you can get away with Invictus Victory, you know, in, you know, the hotter weather, but this one really needs cooler weather because it is a very, dense fragrance. Very spicy, like warm spicy that will kind of warm you up mixed with vanilla and amber and, you know, of course, that powder nature. And the powderiness comes from uh, a flower as iris or iris note or whatever it is. It's kind of different from this one, which is next on the list. This is our Monte Code Parfum. This one also has iris in here, but the iris in here is a lot fresher and it's more like vibrant. And it's like, it's still got that like powdery kind of texture to it, but this one has like tonka bean to support that powderiness. But this one, is different from that one because it has a lot more fresh aspects to it. There's bergamot in here, but this one has like a little bit of a cedar aspect with some like clary sage in there. So it really kind of gives it a fresh zing. It's not so like dense and dark powdery, but it's more fresh and aromatic powdery. Regardless, this is a sexy boss fragrance. This is a sexy daily driver fragrance. You can wear this to the office. It's really stunning and it's in a black bottle. What could you, you know, you can't go wrong with that. This next one is highly slept on. This is Mont Blanc Legend Eau de Parfum. Woody, citrus. This is a very aromatic fragrance. This is some stunning stuff. I get really excited about this one. This one is like so good. It's highly underrated, guys. This is a cheapy too, so you can pick this one up pretty cheap. And it has such a beautiful, scent character to it. Um, it kind of takes the original DNA and it kind of just matures everything, brings it up a notch. There's some bergamot, there's some violet, there's some flowery aspects in the mid, but there's some leather and oak moss in the base. It's really a great fragrance. Everything is so really well blended together. It's very citrusy at the top and it leans heavily on the woods. And really, this one is a truly, truly slept on fragrance. Uh, it needs to be talked about more. The performance is great on it too. I get really good longevity and the sillage is really good too. It's nothing like beast mode. You're not gonna like kill anybody. You do have a nice scent trail following you out through the entire day. It's like an eight hour fragrance. Maybe some people might get six to eight hours in that area. So I'm not gonna like tout it as like the best you know, longevity on, on the planet, but it is really, really nice. It, it's really like nothing lackluster about it. It's nothing like, it's only gonna perform like two hours, three hours, nothing like that. It, it is really dense and it does last for a pretty long time. I think this was on Trevor's list too. Tom Ford, ombre, leather. I think this is gonna be on everybody's list that does this video. Let's let's see if that actually happens. A sexy, spicy cardamom in here. It's nothing like a rugged biker man. It's more of like a well-dressed gentleman with a leather coat or like some leather gloves for like a guy wearing like a suit, something like that. Nothing like rugged, like, you know, go into the biker bar wearing a leather jacket, nothing like that. But this one gives you so much confidence. Pretty sure if you put this on and you're wearing this, it's gonna give you some nice confidence too. This one is pretty dense though. This one has like patchouli and moss, but it has like a jasmine in there that really kind of makes it, you know, sparkle a little bit in like a white floral kind of way, like a flowery sparkling kind of way. I don't know if that makes any sense, but then there's the spicy aspects at the top. It's really smooth. I, I want to preface that. I think I say that all the time when I talk about this thing is it's smooth, really refined. I should just start saying that refined. Speaking of refined fragrances, the Eau de Parfum of this one is my favorite fragrance. One of my favorites of all time. I've used a ton. Of, of the Eau de Parfum. This is the Le Parfum, and I don't really know what else to say other than this is a smoother, refined version of Y Eau de Parfum, and it's exactly that. I, I really don't find any other differences. Maybe it's a little softer and spicier, maybe. It's really kind of like, you know, when you're smelling it in the air and you're passing by somebody, no one's really gonna notice the difference. Everyone's gonna assume that you're just wearing Actually, they, they don't really care. They're just gonna smell you and be like, wow, he smells amazing. Yeah. They're not gonna be like, well, who's wearing the Le Parfum instead of the Eau de Parfum? I hate designer fragrances. It is some stunning stuff though. It, I'm not gonna be picking up the 
intense eau de parfum because I have heard some really bad reviews come out about it and I am not ready to pick that up. I will pick it up if the price is right, but usually the YSL fragrances don't get heavily discounted. Another YSL fragrance that is in the black model that's so dope, Lana de Lomes Le Parfum. It's got some great like pepper at the top and it's got some aromatic nature. It's kind of sweet. So the interesting thing with this one is it's got some pepper at the top with some mixed with some bergamot, which is really just, it pushes off and it smells divine. It really does. In the base here, you have like some vetiver and some great vanilla. It's nothing like extraordinarily vanilla, you know, but it mixes in with the fruity aspects really nicely. And it's like so well blended together. And that's what really provides it a lot of the sweetness in here. It doesn't come across like overly sweet, like a Stronger With You, absolutely that kind of sweet, but it's more of a, tame like subtle sweetness and then like the vetiver and the patchouli in the base just kind of really make it a dense base layering with all that freshness aromaticness and that fresh spicy just zing to the top it's a truly remarkable fragrance um, and i think that this is the best flanker um, you know considering i haven't spent any time with blue electric you know i'm a biased jerk but you know what are you gonna do another fragrance that is heavy on the lavender the clary sage and the woods in the base this one gets a lot of hate and i don't understand why it, it gets hated on all across the internet and i think it turns off people from picking it up so i'm gonna reinforce this one this one is ralph's club eau de parfum and this is some truly good good stuff this is nothing like groundbreaking let me just be clear on that this is not like you're gonna buy it off of a niche website and be completely stunned at how dense and deep and dark and rich and all that. It's nothing like that. It's a very designer fragrance. Like, don't get me wrong. What it does, it gets you like everything you need for like a versatile throw on scent. You smell great throughout the day and you smell non-offensive. There's a little bit of like a bubble gum kind of sweetness in here, but that really kind of wears off in the first 30 minutes. It's completely gone. Maybe has a little bit trickling throughout, you know, the entire day, but it, it's nothing like overly sweet, overly done. I don't understand the hate that this one gets. With all these flankers coming out nowadays, all these big, big brands are just releasing flanker after flanker. This was actually a whole new line. It was a brand new line, something that has never been done before. I'm talking about like flankers, you know, from these products and stuff. And it just got received with critical bash. Uh, and I don't understand. It's very lavender heavy. It's a beautiful just push off and you smell great, musky, heavy. A um, little bit of woods in here, just really well, well rounded. People really like the parfum version and that's a good one too. I tried it on at Sephora, excellent stuff. Um, I've heard some mixed things about the performance on it, but um, I'm interested in picking it up. Ralph's Club is like a total underrated fragrance and it's, it's nice that it's underrated because nobody wears it. Then I can wear it and I smell kind of unique. I go, I don't know. Ralph's Club Eau de Parfum is a great, great fragrance. And it looks sexy on your shelf. And that's one of the big things about black bottles. The next one on the list is Bentley Absolute for men. Dark, rich, powerful. This is a little bit of a sweet aspect, but there's a lot of denseness with this one. This one is an extremely masculine fragrance, so it's really dark and really deep and dense. I mean, uh, chicks can wear it too. Don't make, get me wrong, you can wear anything you'd like. Please, just, I wanna preface, you can wear whatever you would like. So this is very woody. It's a little bit of amber character going on in here, but also it leans on the spicy aspects, a little bit of warm, spicy. Pink pepper and ginger are at the top and it kind of gives it kind of like a zing at the top, but then that kind of dries down and it becomes a really spicy, woody fragrance with all that cedar, sandalwood, moss, ambers, you know, all that. And it's just really dense. It's really dark. It's really rich. It's a statement maker. It really truly is. This is some pretty good value for your money. I mean, it's pretty cheap and it does what you need it to do in the fall and the winter time. This is a very deep and dark and rich fragrance. So do not buy this if you're in a hotter climate or in you know the summertime. This is a 
This is leaning more towards the heavy, denser fragrances. And it's very masculine too. So um, if you're not, you know, accustomed to like masculine scents, don't do it. One of my favorites, one of my absolute favorites is Lalique White and Black. This is a latent clone. This is a latent sexiness. And my God, this is so good. I've gotten so many compliments with this thing, including like some really random weird ass shit. This needs to be in my weekly rotation this week because, oh God, it's so good. Lalique White and Black is like a identical, not an identical, there is some differences, but I think it's like a 90% identical, I keep saying identical, 90% clone of Layton. It's really good. It's nothing to be sad about either. I think we can like push pennies at like what, you know, fragrance does it better. Detroit Noir or, you know, La Ligue White and Black or Alexandria fragrances have. Even Mason Howell Hombre. So many clones out there. It's actually getting ridiculous at this point, gentlemen. But anyway, La Ligue White and Black is really good. It's sexy. It lasts for a long time. It's a, um, I think it's a masterpiece. I think I'm going to get written up by the police on that one. So Layden was murdered. Yes. I like wearing it. It's like warm, spicy. It's got some ambery character. It really leans into that vanilla and the bergamot at the top. It's like a juicy citrus at the top mixed with some vanilla. And it's just very good. Spices in here, it's like cardamom, I think it is. And then some lavender. There's, uh, you know, some vanilla in here, obviously, because it's latent. There's vanilla. I'm just kind of kind of remembering. What are your fragrances? in your collection that are black bottles that you love. Five Below sells a black bottle. Listen, you gotta like recommend it to somebody. So no like weird, you know, wish stuff going on in the comments. Anyway, give me some recommendations. Once again, thank you to Trevor who tagged me. Go check his channel out. Link will be in the description down below. And once again, I'm gonna tag Post Cologne, Chad Secrets, and TLTG Reviews. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Take care and I'll see you next time.